Well, to take another look at how the federal budget will affect Canada's youth, we are joined in Ottawa by the National Director of the Canadian Alliance of Student Associations, Zach Daler. And even though education is provincially funded, the federal government could set out funding that will help Canadian universities and colleges. Uh, so, Zach, uh, like we mentioned, university funding is set out by the provinces. Why does the federal budget matter to Canadian post-secondary students? Well, the Canadian Alliance of Student Associations, representing about 320,000 students across Canada, is really interested in ensuring that, uh, while well, the money is given from the, the federal government to the provinces to help fund education, that we're going to see that envelope grow in the future. In, in terms of the upcoming budget, uh, we're quite interested to see what investments are going to be made in innovation and research uh, to help create jobs for young people in, in moving forward. Yeah, you just talked about that, and I want to uh, elaborate a bit. You're pleased with the funding going to two specific areas. Start with research and innovation. How, how do you think funding in that particular area is going to help uh, Canada's universities, post-secondary institutions in this country? Well, we know that uh, we need to invest in education as a priority in this country, and uh, that's just it. Education is an investment. It's, it's not an expenditure. And the more money that we can uh, put into that uh, sector through research and development and innovation and, of course, through the federal transfers, is going to grow uh, the education of our, our citizens. It's going to create jobs through research opportunities, through faculty. It's going to create our, our colleges and our universities as really, you know, driving forces of our, of our future economy. You're also looking for funding in the training sector. What are your expectations there? Well, we're hoping that, uh, you know, those who are in polytechnics and colleges are going to be supported, uh, whether that be through um, the loans uh, system. Uh, you know, any student who, who wants to access post-secondary education should be able to access post-secondary education. And, you know, we're hoping that those students will, again, have the opportunity through funding, through, you know, amendments to the Canada Student Loan Program uh, or, or a variety of other mechanisms uh, through the assessment through the Canada Student Loan Program to make sure that they have the resources uh, to access and, and, and be successful. Zach, your alliance sent some recommendations for changes to the Canada Student Loan Program. I'm wondering if you can outline, first off, those recommendations and how they were received by the government. Well, CASA testified before the Finance Committee uh, this year when they were doing their pre-budget consultations, and we put in front of them some solutions that we hope would make a change uh, in the immediate while always keeping an eye on, on the future. And, and one of those changes was making sure that students could access a vehicle uh, without being penalized through the assessment process of Canada Student Loan Program. Right now, that assessment uh, claws back their loan for owning a vehicle, uh, and your vehicle, uh, the, the amount that you can have for a vehicle is around $5,000. And we know just through a review that uh, the, the average cut price of a, a used vehicle is, you know, 11000 to $20,000, and that assessment is just not meeting the reality for, for students. What are the economic benefits of making funding choices that help Canada's post-secondary students and, and institutions? Mm -hmm. Well, we know that an educated population is a healthier population, is uh, a more active population, and of course a more innovative population. We are going to have some uh, labor market demands uh, coming up into the future. Uh, you know, as we get to the point, uh, whenever that may be, that those uh, baby boomers are retiring, we're going to need people to take over those jobs um, and, and be able to, to push the economy forward and, and, and push us forward um, in, in that innovation and, and research uh, sector. And Zach, real quick, what are you hearing in terms of reaction to this idea of raising the retirement age? Obviously it doesn't affect people in your associations yet anyway. What's the initial reaction though from them? Uh, well, you know, the, the government has to make some strategic choices uh, in, in moving forward. We, we have to make sure that uh, the, the people from, um, who are in school now, who are pursuing school, uh, who, who want to go out into the, the career uh, working world, um, can do so. And, and you know, we, we're going to have to plan for that. Uh, I think we have uh, more than enough time to kind of settle into that, as it doesn't necessarily affect us right away. Mm -hmm. um, but I think it just kind of signals, you know, uh, a change in, in the reality of our economy. But it also signals that, uh, you know, we, we need to be prepared to, to make our voice heard and, and protect, uh, you know, our interests as, as Canadians and as young people, too. Zach Daler is with the Canadian Alliance of Student Associations joining us from Ottawa today. Thanks, Zach, for your time. Thank you. We're going to take a quick break, but coming up, uh, we'll go back to Andrew Pyle and closing thoughts as we count down to the budget special. Stay with us.